New this morning, the most high profile and controversial gun bill at the Colorado Capitol right now passed its first test early this morning. After hours of testimony, the House Judiciary Committee advanced a ban on so-called assault weapons. The bill by Denver Democrats Tim Hernandez and Elizabeth Epps defines assault weapons as a 50 caliber rifle or a semi-automatic firearm with attachable magazine and a modification like a pistol grip or muzzle brake. There are exceptions to allow members of the military and law enforcement to have those weapons. The 7 to 3 committee vote, which was along party lines, came just after midnight. The bill now goes to the full House, where Democrats have a supermajority, but it may not make it past the state Senate, and even if it does, Governor Polis has expressed skepticism about it. If it does become law, it could quickly get tied up in court, as gun rights advocates have already promised to sue. Let me be clear. If this bill is signed into law before the ink is dried, I will file a lawsuit. I can promise you that. First, supporters point to Colorado's history of high profile mass shootings like the one at Boulder King Supers. And Friday <clears throat> marks three years since a shooter killed 10 people at the store on Table Mesa. A semi-automatic weapon was used in that attack. In the years that followed, Boulder County commissioners passed several firearm restrictions, but they admit enforcement hasn't been easy. The Board of Boulder County Commissioners passed five local ordinances last year including a prohibition on the sale and purchase of assault weapons, large capacity magazines and trigger activators. As an elected official, we've done much at the local level and we recognize that action is still required at the state and federal level. Assault weapons bans passed in other states like Illinois have been stalled in federal courts. The Supreme Court has declined to take up those cases while they make their way through the appeals process. We know talking about Colorado's history of mass shootings can bring up some very bad memories. So if you need help, you can contact the Colorado Crisis Services anytime. That number is 844-493-8255 or you can text the word TALK to 38255. This was a closure. I think we were all wanting and needing. 31 year old Jamil James will now be facing 22 years in prison after killing this man Kevin Piaskowski while driving down I-70. Everything was caught on dash cam video and since that moment it has been painful for the Piaskowski family. They had to learn to live without him. Now knowing how long Kevin's killer will be in jail for, they can finally move on. This has been the lowest of lows. So much chaos like I think his family and I are just ready to experience life without all of this trauma around it. His mom Tamara says that she is so glad to finally see the end to all of this and she is now hoping to keep Kevin's legacy alive by visiting the places that they were planning to go together and spreading his ashes along the way. New this morning, a fire has made four apartments in Thornton uninhabitable. It happened yesterday at the Meadows at Town Center Apartments off of Washington Street, east of I-25. Thornton Fire says that no one was hurt. They did have to rescue a couple of animals from the building. Investigators say smoke and fire damage made those apartments unlivable, and they are still getting into the cause. New this morning, Texas's new immigration law has been blocked again, hours after the U.S. Supreme Court allowed it to go into effect. A federal appeals court put a stop to it. The law would let Texas police arrest people suspected of crossing the southern border illegally. A first arrest could bring six months in jail. Repeat offenders could end up in prison for up to 20 years. The law would also require judges to order migrants return to Mexico if they are convicted. Now here in Denver, the city counted 30 new migrant arrivals yesterday yesterday as the total number of people helped inches ever closer to 40,000. As of this morning, a little more than 1,000 are still in city shelters. That number is bound to change as the city consolidates more of its migrant housing this week. One of the five hotel shelters the city is using to shelter those migrants will close, but it is working with the archdiocese to provide bridge housing for a limited number of families with kids. The city says it has spent more than $61 million on its migrant response. Response. New this morning, an alert from the feds about a scam that's happening more often these days. The Federal Trade Commission says scammers are using names of real FTC employees to try to steal your money, and they're getting a lot more of it as of late. Five years ago, this scam netted an average loss of about $3,000. Today, it's 7000 The agency says it will never contact you to demand money, nor will it tell you to move money to protect it. If someone calls saying they work for the FTC, hang up and report it. Today, the Federal Reserve will vote on whether to cut interest rates, but analysts say 
don't get your hopes up. They're not expecting rates to change, at least for now. They say the economy is doing pretty well, though there are some bumps ahead. Things like Mideast unrest, making it harder to get oil and other goods, or the shutdowns the government keeps barely avoiding and higher gas prices could be reasons the Fed decides to keep rates where they are, at least for now. And one thing you want to know about the weather today is not much going on around the state. Just a few fair weather clouds drifting across. Temperatures on the front range are going to be pretty nice from Aurora all the way up to Greeley. We are in the low to mid-60s with plenty of sunshine. Ed, thank you. We want to get you right back outside. We are, of course, still following delays on westbound 76 yet again today as we take a live look for you from Sky 9 this hour. You can see that a lane closure, those cones as cars are passing by and kind of showing that reflection of the lanes on the highway here. So again, we drop down to one lane right around 74th. It's already causing at least a 10 minute backup for you on westbound 76 traveling into Commerce City and CDOT sending us a note yesterday that this is going to be ongoing for several days. So if this is part of your normal morning drive, Highway 2 is a good workaround option. Erica, thank you. Right now we are just 10 days from Red Rocks opening its concert season. The iconic venue will kick off the 2024 season March 30th when Boogie T takes the stage. Other artists coming this season include electronic music star Elenium in May. Diana Ross will perform in June. July will bring a day to remember Lindsey Sterling and Lyle Lovett to the venue. Slightly Stupid and Dirks Bentley will come in in August and Megan Trainer in October. You can find the full concert schedule from this month all the way through November on on our website at 9news.com. Now getting to and from Red Rocks can be a little chaotic for any event or concert, especially since public transportation isn't an option. Yeah, but it could be soon. 9 News reporter Brianna Fernandez joins us live from Red Rocks this morning. Brianna, good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. So yeah, the city of Denver and Jefferson County officials, they're trying to get the RTDW line to pass through here, through Red Rocks, Morrison, as well as Golden, because if you guys know, getting to Red Rocks, you have to pass a lot of obstacles. There's a couple of options to get to Red Rocks and come see a concert here at this venue. So you can either drive here, which is about 30 minutes if you're coming from downtown to Jefferson County or down south or north. That's going to be even a longer ride. You can either carpool or take Uber and Lyft. That is going to be $40, approximately $40 to get here. Then you have to think about your way back. That's going to be an additional $40. So of course, getting to Red Rocks can be pricey as well. And you also have to think about the parking lots here that get packed and then the traffic getting out of Red Rocks. So right now the RTD W line leaves from downtown Denver, heads west to Jefferson County, but ends at the Jefferson County Government Center here in Golden. So Denver City Council member for District 9, Daryl Watson, says expanding that line would not only help with congestion and also carbon footprint, but also provide a safer option for folks attending concerts here. What a connector is, um, we haven't defined the outcome as yet, but we think that some level of public-private um, um, uh, collaboration for a connector, some type of bus or transit uh, that takes us from the W line directly to Red Rocks, which stops in between at places that folks want to be at. Yeah, so Watson says that city leaders, as well as the Jefferson County officials, they are looking for solutions, trying to get this RTDW line here to Red Rocks, Morrison, as well as Golden. But right now what they're focusing on is funding. So hopefully, they're hopeful that there's going to be a pilot program by 2025 here at Red Rocks. I'm going to send it back to you guys in the studio. Look, there's nothing that's going to stop me from going to see one of my favorite sure, bands absolutely. or something at Red Rocks. But if they can figure this part out and make it smoother, I'm all in. Yeah, exactly. And especially because you want to enjoy the concerts out here at Red Rock. So you probably, you know, want to have a drink or two, be with your friends and then not have to worry about getting into the car, getting behind the wheel, you know, getting through that traffic and that parking lot. It's just it's a mess. So hopefully they can get that public transportation out here to this area. Yeah, makes it more accessible. And like she mentioned, maybe even safer for a lot of people. Brianna, thank you.